manhunt continues for one of the two brothers suspected in a mass stabbing at multiple locations in Saskatchewan, Canada. Now, police are searching for 30-year-old Miles Sanderson in connection to the stabbings that left 10 dead and 18 injured. Police have spotted Miles in an indigenous reserve near Saskatchewan and is asking people nearby to stay in their home. The manhunt still continues. Miles' brother Damien was found dead by police in a heavily grassed area with wounds that did not appear to be self-inflicted. Newsy correspondent Moira Siriani has more on the details surrounding this case. Canadian authorities identified the suspects in the stabbing spree as 31-year-old Damien Sanderson and 30-year-old Miles Sanderson. Authorities got the first call about a stabbing in the James Smith Cree Nation at 5.40 Sunday morning. More calls from other nearby locations came minutes later. In total, authorities identified 13 crime scenes. Police issued the first emergency Saturday in Saskatchewan and later expanded it for Manitoba and Alberta, calling the suspects armed and dangerous. It appears that some of the victims may have been targeted and some may be random. They told residents in the area to shelter at home as the manhunt got underway. Officials also looked online for any additional information, including clues on a motive. Social media brings us lots of information and brings us lots of challenges. The attack is one of the deadliest mass killings in Canada's history. It is certainly a very significant event. Um, if not the largest, uh, certainly the largest we've seen in the last number of years. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of anxiety in our province and in our communities this morning and all day yesterday. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said he was devastated by the attacks, calling them horrific and heartbreaking, and sending his thoughts to the injured and those who lost a loved one. Mara Sirianni, Newsy. All right. I want to bring back in forensic psychologist John De La Torre. He was with us last hour and still with me, criminal defense attorneys Marie Pedetta and Josh Schiffer. Um, John, I want to start with you because, again, we, we looked at a previous case, that murder abduction that happened in Memphis. We talked a little bit about the, the, um, the, the stranger aspect of it. Here, the authorities are saying that some were targeted, some were random. Just at first glance, looking at the facts that we know so far, what are your thoughts on this case? I think we need to look at uh, the science behind mass casualty events. This this, this strikes like a, a like like something like that. These are in, these are individuals who find themselves on the pathway to violence due to some grievance gathering. Initially, they have a hard time kind of managing their emotions because of because of it. They find themselves isolated, alone, perhaps even believing in some extremist <laughs> ideology. The idea is that they need to compel themselves to engaging from thought into action. And a lot of these things come from just perceived slights, perhaps you know the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, or something like that, right? The loss of a of a relationship. All of these things happen. But the pair being brothers is a unique aspect, and it's certainly possible that one was experiencing a tremendous amount of negative emotional stress, and the brother, the other one, sort of somehow got involved in some kind of ancillary way. Yeah. So that's the part that kind of it strikes me as a little bit weird. The fact that again. You had some folks that were random, some targeted. That happens. You may have, he may have been targeting a certain group or a few people. Other people might have gotten in the way. But then his brother appears to be. Now, again, we don't know for sure. Um, the wounds, the, according to authorities, don't appear to be self-inflicted. So let's assume they were inflicted by his brother. What do you make of that? Because it seems to me the pathology of killing one's own family member changes the equation a little bit. It might, and I'm not sure that that's what we're quite looking at just yet, because if he was killed by his brother, then it's probably because the brother did not see the ideology the same way that the dominant personality did. So because of that, because he was targeting randoms when he shouldn't have been targeting randoms, then he needed to go. But it's also possible that given the time frame in which all of these things happen, the brothers uh, ended up getting into a fight that they didn't expect to get into, and one of the, one of the people that they ended up killing was probably fought back and may have landed a couple of blows before uh, before end up succumbing to their wounds or something like that. There's still a lot to learn about what happened with these two and their motivations behind it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Josh Schiffer, one of the narratives that is coming out, and we talked last uh, session about the idea of controlling the narrative, um, the folks out there in that community, it's uh, the Cree Nation, they are uh, sort of in this reserve and apparently there, and, and, and this is a known fact, that there's a lot of drug use, a lot of uh, uh, alcoholism on, on these reserves. 
And they're claiming this is part and parcel of, of that, the fact that they've been put on this reserve. They've been marginalized, and these communities yeah. are suffering. Your thoughts on this? Uh, it's absolutely something that uh, that we've known about as a nation for a long time. Most of the First Nations people in the United States as well as Canada, they really didn't get uh, a good foundation to be productive members of what we would call Western society. Over the many treaties that basically the governments have broken virtually every one, the first peoples, as they've stayed cleaved away from the rest of the population, have not developed some of the social support mechanisms and some of the same social values that Western civilization has or more uh, non-First Nation uh, civilizations and cultures have. And that's led to a really unfortunate uh, just prevalence of drug, alcohol, and untreated substance and mental health issues. This is prevalent in virtually every single reservation in North America. There are actually reservations, uh, especially in Alaska, that are so removed, they don't even allow the sale of alcohol. They are dry reservations because of the physiology involved, what's been determined is that many First Nations peoples have a higher incidence of being subject to alcohol and drug abuse, whether that's cultural or biological, I really don't have the answer to that. But mental health and substance automatically came to my mind. These are very rural communities, uh, really broad, but small populations, a lot of people know each other, and in those small populations, you can get a lot of drama. Uh, I'll be really interested to see what the connection between these brothers are. Uh, everybody's got to ride or die, but man, to bring your brother on an adventure like this, that is terrifying. Yeah, and, and John, I want to ask you, you know, the, again, I, I think the elders in the community are, are using this opportunity to let the world know what's going on in places that we often don't think about. But do you think this is the type of thing that can be fueled by uh, meth, uh, crack, alcohol, addictions, and maybe just someone losing it? Or you, you clearly think there's something more behind this? Oh, yeah. No, it's never that someone just <clears throat> lost it. But the use of drugs and alcohol and things like that, those uh, disinhibit you. Right. So it makes it so that you no longer are functioning sort of in, in your right state of mind so that you can have all of these negative thoughts happen, all these violent thoughts happen. And now that you're intoxicated, now you're more than willing uh, to, to engage in these kinds of things. All right. Well, the search continues for the suspect in this case. Of course, we will keep you updated if anything happens with it again. Miles Sanderson is his name. All right.